Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at the electron configuration of ions. Ions are atoms that have either gained or lost electrons so that they have a charge. Right? So um, these are going to be charged atoms and if they gain an electron that means that they have an extra negative charge, so they'll be negative. Um, if they have lost electrons, um, then they're going to be positive because now they have more protons in the nucleus than electrons in their orbitals. When an atom forms an ion, the um, arrangement of its electrons is going to follow the same pattern that we've already developed. So an anion, a negative one, is something that has gained electrons compared to the neutral atom. So as a concrete example, fluorine has uh, nine electrons and the fluoride ion has picked up one extra and has 10 electrons. So if we're going to write the electron configuration for fluorine, the noble gas core for fluorine would be helium and then that'll be followed by 2s2, 2p5. You have to count over five in the p block to get to fluorine. If we add one more electron to make that fluoride ion, we have to add one more electron to the electron configuration. So it'll start off just the same way with the noble gas core of helium, followed by 2s2, and then 2p6. Just to work one more example for a negative ion, oxygen has eight electrons, it's atomic number eight. The noble gas core for oxygen is helium, and then that'll be followed by 2s2, and then 2p is its final subshell. And if we count over to oxygen, we count over four spaces, so it'll be 2p4. When oxygen forms the oxide ion with a minus two charge, it's picked up two extra electrons to get that negative two. And so now we're talking 10 electrons. So its electron configuration will be He 2s2 2p6. So that right here is for oxygen with a minus two. Um, this one here is for the neutral oxygen. And up above, I probably should have labeled these better. This is for neutral fluorine. And this one on the right is for the fluoride ion. Now, what I'd really like to point out to you here is that we ended up with the exact same electron configuration for fluoride, whoops, for fluoride as we did for oxide. Oxide and fluoride end up with the same number of electrons arranged in the exact same pattern. Species that have the same electron configuration are called isoelectronic. Iso means the same, so isoelectronic means they have the same arrangement of electrons. Cations are elements that have lost electrons so that they now have more protons in the nucleus than electrons. So as an example, sodium, the neutral atom, has 11 electrons, but sodium with a plus one charge has lost one electron and only has 10 electrons. If we go to write the electron configuration um, for sodium, the noble gas core for sodium is neon, and then uh, past neon, we still need one more electron that's on the third row in the S block, so it'll be 3S, and we just need one more. Now, to get the sodium ion with its 10 electrons instead of 11, we'll take that sodium atom electron configuration and take one away. So all we have left at that point is that noble gas core neon. For another example, aluminum has 13 electrons, and Al plus 3 has lost 3 of those, so it only has 10 electrons. So 
So if we write the electron configuration for aluminum, its noble gas core is neon. And then we have 3s2, 3p1 past that. If we're going to write the electron configuration for aluminum with its plus 3 charge, well, we have to take three electrons away from the neutral atom aluminum's electron configuration. So we're going to lose that 3p1, that's one electron, and then we'll lose the 3s2, those uh, two other electrons. That leaves us with just that noble gas core neon. Um, so here in a, another example of isoelectronic species, we have sodium with its plus one charge and aluminum with its plus three charge also being isoelectronic. So isoelectronic simply means that the, um, they're, uh, they are species that have the same number of electrons and most of the time, main group elements will either gain or lose electrons to become isoelectronic with the noble gases. Um, all four of the ions we just looked at, oxygen, fluorine, sodium, and aluminum, are all isoelectronic with the noble gas neon. Some of the heavier P block elements are variable charge elements, and uh, they won't necessarily become isoelectronic with a noble gas, but they might. Um, so for instance, if we take a look at indium, indium is atomic number 49, and if we write its electron configuration, we've got krypton, 5s2, 4d10, 5p1. Well, krypton, I, I'm sorry, uh, indium commonly forms ions with either a plus one or a plus three charge. And so if we're going to lose just one electron out of here, we're going to lose that 5p1 electron. And when we lose that 5p1 electron to get a plus one charge, we end up with krypton 5s2 4d10 for our electron configuration. Um, losing just the p electron and retaining the s electrons is sometimes referred to as the inert pair effect. That completely filled subshell is stable, and so it's a little bit difficult uh, to remove them. However, indium also forms a plus three ion in which it has lost those uh, 5s2 electrons as well. So indium plus 3 is krypton 4d10. When these metals are losing electrons, they're going to um, lose these electrons that are in the, the highest numbered shell, the fifth shell um, in this case, before they would start working away at those fourth shell electrons. And anyway, indium plus one and indium plus three are the common stable ions that indium will form. If we're talking transition metal ions, something a little bit different happens when transition metals form ions. Generally speaking, they are going to lose their highest numbered S electrons before they start losing their D electrons. So as an example, cadmium has an electron configuration of krypton 5s2 4d10. If these behaved like um, just following our, um, our filling order in reverse, we would lose the 4d electrons first, but that's not what happens. Generally speaking, we are going to lose the, the electrons without, in the highest numbered shell, which would be the fifth shell with those 5s2 electrons. So when cadmium uh, forms its plus two ion, which is the stable ion for cadmium, we end up with krypton 4d10 because it's lost those s electrons. For cobalt, we're going to have argon 4s2 3d7 for its complete configuration. And when it forms an ion, 
it's going to lose those S electrons first. And in this case, it needs to lose more than just that. So after it's lost the S electrons, it loses one from the D subshell as well to form that cobalt plus three ion. So why do the transition metals um, lose these electrons in a, a different order than just reversing the way that they filled? Well, remember the the order that we came up with is based on the idea that, that the many electron atoms will do things just like the hydrogen atom does, and it just ignores those electron-electron repulsions. Um, so one way to think about that is that once you've actually put all of those electrons into the orbitals and um, the, they're, they're filled in that way, the energies of the orbitals shift slightly so that the, for instance, for cadmium, the 5s electrons are now at a higher energy. And so as we start to reverse the process and pull electrons out, they are the easiest ones to get rid of um, just because the energy ordering of those orbitals shifts slightly due to those electron-electron repulsions. So in this video, we looked at how you would write the electron configurations of ions. Um, it's going to follow the same pattern that you would follow for um, writing the electron configurations for atoms, just will land at a different total number of electrons. However, when we're looking at transition metals, keep in mind that when they ionize, they are going to lose the, ele the S electrons first before they lose their D electrons.